Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the heavenly backyard garden. It's springtime here in Savannah and I have some exciting news. We had a couple nights of clear skies. Well, I mean, exciting as that is, I know a lot of you have been having issues with clear uh, weather conditions, actually issues with the clouds uh, over the several months of winter plaguing most of the regions uh, across the world even. So, uh, but the sky is beginning to clear off now. We're, we are beginning to get a few clear nights and as the nights clear off, of course, the moon becomes full once again. Anyway, that's not the exciting news. The exciting news is the new camera I just acquired. It's the Topek Sky I-24 based on the Sony 410 uh, IMX sensor. And I tell you, I've been wanting a, a, a wide field view camera, a full frame camera on top of that, and a camera with a large pixel size. And this one has an extremely large pixel size. I believe it's 5.94 microns. So I wanted to test this camera with the two other color cameras that I have. I have the Altair Astro 294 and the ZWO ASI 071, both fine cameras in themselves. But I wanted to put them to the test along with this camera here and, and do a comparison. And I used the Horsehead Nebula, one of my favorite nebula uh, that I love to view up in the heavenly skies from the heavenly backyard garden. So I took pictures of all three cameras on the Horsehead Nebula. So with that being said, let's take a look at the comparison of the three different cameras. But before that, let's take a look at some of the specs on this camera. It's a fantastic camera. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. All right, here's the camera itself. This is the Sky Eye 24 AC full frame camera. And if you can see the lens there, it is huge, the uh, sensor in itself over here on the camera. And uh, I'm just, so far, very impressed. Now it comes with an M54 uh, female thread. And I have a uh, 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 gender changer on here from a female to a male. So I can plug it into my uh, filter wheel over here. And this is the filter wheel. Uh, filter wheels, this one particularly is M54, so you need M54 conversion here uh, to screw it on in. And on the other side though, for my telescope side, uh, this is M48. This slips into my telescope as M48. I would like to have an M54 connector uh, to the uh, scope itself. Now the other cameras I'm going to be using in this uh, test is the uh, uh, a, uh, AA, the Altair Astro 294 um, Protec color camera and it has a smaller sensor and then also in between the two is the ZWO, uh, ZWO ASI 071 camera and as you can see the sensor there is a little bit smaller uh, than the uh, Topek uh, sensor which is huge by the way and uh, the uh, sensor itself uh, is uh, got a diagonal of 43.3 millimeters compared to the Altair Astro, which is 23.3. Oh my gosh, big difference there. Twice the size right there. Now what I do is I just simply uh, screw the, um, well, well, on the filter itself, the filter wheel I'm using uh, for all three cameras, the same filters. I'm using the Optolong L Enhance and the Optilong Quad filters. And I just uh, merge those two together in the processing exactly the same way for all three cameras. So the results should be uh, uh, similar uh, with the same type of a recording. And just to connect the camera uh, to the uh, wheel, I just simply just you know, bring it in here. And then this will set up into the telescope itself and then uh, start recording. All right, let's take a look at some of the specs on the Sky i 24 ac the uh, Totec camera, and uh, it's a, based on the Sony IMX410 color chip the, uh, and sensor. Uh, the optical format is a full frame. As you can see, the resolution, this is huge, 6064 by 4040. That produces an extremely large file size. Uh, the pixel size, very large pixel size as well. 5.94. Comparing that with the um, uh, the ZWO 
ASI camera, the 071, the pixel size there is 478, and with the Altair Astro 294, uh, the pixel size is 463. So it's it's much bigger uh, pixel size. Um, but for a planetary camera, if you want to use a planetary camera, usually the pixel size there is less than 3, 2.9 uh, on my planetary cameras, but I'm not testing those with this. Let's take a look at their website and um, bring that up over here. Uh, there's their website. Let's go to the top right here of the page, and there it is. And uh, you have the option of uh, getting the AR glass or the IR cut filter glass over the uh, sensor. Uh, you have the choice of the um, what type of electrical cable you like, the Euro plug, the UK plug, or the US plug, of course. I'm taking the US plug. And the price tag for this camera is around 2,400 US dollars. So yeah, it's a bit of on the expensive side, but uh, you get what you pay for, okay? And this camera seems to be getting, uh, I'm getting what I'm paying for it. So I'm so far, so far, I'm, I'm, I'm good. There is the information about the Sky i 24 ac we just saw. Here's some more information uh, concerning the uh, camera itself. Uh, it's a 14-bit camera. Uh, it's got a DDR3 buffer of 512 uh, megabytes. Uh, it's got USB 3 connection for the camera and USB 2 connection for uh, accessories such as the filter wheel and the guide scope. Um, effective cooling temperature 35 degrees below zero uh, or below ambient i believe that's uh, what that stands for uh the other night it was eight degrees celsius outside about 48 degrees 52 degrees at, at my uh, uh, yard when i was taking the imagery and i cooled it down to minus 10 celsius and it went right straight to it in, in just a couple of minutes so it was very very fast and cooling and um uh, the other information as well, if you would like to check those values out, that's on their website. And being a full frame sensor, uh, sensor of course, we just saw uh, this information here. Uh, the DDR3 buffer, uh, 5 point, 512 megabytes, zero amp glow. That's interesting. There's no amp glow associated with it. Uh, this amp glow here is typical of the 294 uh, camera. Very little amp glow on the um, ZWO camera. Uh, but on the uh, this camera here, no amp glow whatsoever, and that that makes it uh, well. You really don't need darks. You don't have to fuss with the darks. However, occasionally you might get some uh, hot pixels. Usually the uh, stacking programs will take care of that. But uh, if you have some uh, permanent hot pixels or cold pixels, uh, uh, generating a, a set of darks wouldn't hurt whatsoever. Anti-condensation or dew shield or dew camera or, 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 or um, dew heater uh, is associated with this camera and it keeps the dew from forming on the sensor and the frost if it's cold enough, uh, enough moisture gets in, but it, it keeps the uh, sensor clean. So that's good news. And I'm going to be showing you that in a minute in the when I set this up in Nina. And the spectral sensitivity, there you have it. That's about the same thing as the ZWO camera. Uh, there's the uh, uh, Toltec camera and the ZWO overlaying it. It's, it's whoops, about the same thing, went the wrong way. Uh, right here, there it is. That's the overlay with the ZWO. It's basically the same thing. A little bit the different sensitivities, uh, but more or less the, the, the same. All right, now let's... Um, look at one other thing here the uh, packing list it comes of course with the camera and it comes with it, its own power supply and power line cord uh, usb 3 data cable comes with that it comes with a little allen wrench for setting the uh, uh, tilt plate if you want to take the tilt plate uh, uh, adjust that it has the adapter ring it comes with the uh, m54 female threaded camera uh, on the uh, camera side and most telescopes are using M48. So it has the adapter ring M54 to M48. And then it has a, uh, a spacer, a 16.5 millimeter spacer, M48 to M48. And it has an adapter ring if you want to take it down to M42. Some uh, scopes are using M42. Uh, there's your adapter for that. All right, let's take a look at Nino right now and loading in the camera itself. And you have the... Uh, uh, camera settings and you can you can select the Totec uh, Sky E24 AC or the ASCOM uh, Totec camera uh, if you download the ASCOM files for this and I would recommend uh, using the uh, uh, Nina selection here the uh, Totec camera okay we'll load it in there it is load the camera and there it is 
uh, it's it's already ready to go and uh, uh, that's how I do it in Nino now also with this camera uh, I have a default gain at 500 uh, offset I have it set at 30 um, the USB limits uh, 0 to 2 I picked it 2 um, high conversion gain you have the choice of high conversion or low conversion and same thing for the uh, readout mode uh, low conversion high conversions and so forth um, the alter mode you can turn that on or off um, over here I have it on uh, binning average pixels I just leave that off right now uh, Topek uh, heater strength uh, you got 0 to 4 and I have a very humid climate here, so I keep it at four. I suppose I can get away with uh, two. And uh, the fan speed uh, from zero to one, uh, let's just put it at 0.5, okay? And we'll do that. Uh, well, it doesn't like that. Zero, no? oh, zero, zero, one, okay. Uh, I'll just put it at one. All right, all right, there we have it right there. And then we can set the cooling uh, on the system here. Um, uh, let's go down to minus 10 and uh, uh, you can set the duration of how long you want to take to cool the camera down one minute zero minutes uh, as fast as possible or you can increase this to five to ten minutes depending on the uh, humidity situation in your area so and then just hit cooling and it starts cooling right away uh, it comes with its own power supply so that's nice or also uh, if you have the 12 volt power supply uh, from your uh, telescope rig you can just plug that in directly to the camera and that's what I'm doing at this stage I have it coming in off my uh, Pegasus power box and it's cooling off quite rapidly already um, it's at 19 20% uh, cooling uh, power and we can see the camera is dropping uh, camera temperature <laughs> is dropping at this time so yeah everything is running uh, well at this hour and it looks like it's uh, uh, going to be ready to go and that's how I set it up in Nina with the um, uh, camera settings okay there's the sensor view and I picked the horse head nebula uh, as I mentioned and uh, the reason I did that because I, the, you have this great nebulosity here you got the horse head right here and you got the flame nebula right over here and Alnatak over here very bright star part of the belt of Orion um, uh, I wanted to see what the uh, difference would be with the different cameras with that bright star and how it would affect the uh, camera itself and I had one interesting uh, um, Artifact uh, showed up not on this camera, but on one of the other cameras. I'll show you that in just a second, but look let's look at the um, uh, Frame size that's the frame uh, of the top tech camera uh, there it is for the ASI zero um, ZWO ASI 071 camera you can see it's it's cropped up much uh, more you get a lot more view with the uh, the top tech camera and then with the um, Altair Altair Astro 294 chip sensor there you can see it's even a, a tighter view here uh, with that and this with the four point uh, 63 micron size chip uh, on this one right here so you can see the difference uh, between that uh, 40 uh, 3.3 diagonal across here versus the 20 uh, 3.3 diagonal across here for the Altair Astro so yeah uh, it does make a difference um, I wanted to get a wider field of view telescope uh, to look at some of these other constellations or, or, or um, uh, nebulosity and nebulas nebulae and uh, uh, with this uh, you know this this view here I, it almost negates the need for me to buy another telescope with that being said let's take a look at the examples and there is the first view the first light of the camera of the Topek uh, uh, sky i 24 AC camera uh, of the Horsehead Nebula and, and it's just gorgeous I mean uh, and Alnatac came out pretty good it, nice and clean a little bit of a starburst there not much I mean it's pretty clean uh, you can see the stars within the uh, glow of Alnatac right there um, so let's take a look at the um, 071 the uh, ZWO and look at that I had a halo in, involved with that uh, capture there uh, this was about a two hour capture and I used the um, all, all the filters were the same the Optolong L enhance and the Optolong quad 
and I used those and I, I, I converged the, uh, the images together to produce the one image here. Um, and again, they're all the same. At first, when I got the off the lung, I thought, well, you know, it didn't do very well, the filters itself. But apparently it's not the filter, it's the camera. And I, I, well, I thought, well, maybe I had some thin clouds and it was causing flaring of the uh, 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 attack. So I took a, a, a five nights, six nights later, I took a picture of it again, and still, there it is, it's still the same thing. I got the, uh, the halos, actually the double halo around the uh, Alnatac uh, with that. What about the Altair Astro camera? And uh, I have a picture of that right there. And uh, again, uh, a tighter field of view, not a bad picture. I mean, that's a good looking picture, good two hour image right there using again, the L Enhance and the L Quad filters. And look at Allen Attack, no, no uh, halos. I got a little bit of a starburst on it, but you know, that actually looks kind of good. But with the uh, toe pack, I didn't even have that. It was really clean image. Uh, with that one thing of interest though, I think I still have it here is the uh, the initial Horsehead Nebula. Yeah Looking at the the initial image that I stacked together with the Topac camera um, It had this huge igniting going on uh, around it uh, with the I had an M48 um, uh, uh, Connectors uh, with the uh, um, system I had on the filter wheel itself M54 to M48 conversion and I had the filter wheel directly connected to the camera but I still got this big netting going on however again with the uh, uh, new devices in Pix and Sight particularly and other softwares as well the with the gradient correction I was able to remove this gradient and uh, um, come up with that image right there. That's the same image uh, just being processed through Pixinsight and the uh, um, a little bit of Photoshop as well for final touch-ups there. But uh, yeah, so everything's looking good. That's first light of the Topek um, Sky Eye 24 AC camera. So I'm very, very impressed with it. The telescope that I used was the Orion Eon 130mm refractor telescope with a focal length of 910 millimeters, And I was shooting it at the native focal ratio of f7. And uh, I just uh, impressed with, well, all the pictures came out really well, but the, the Topek camera, I think, won the battle here with that wide field of view. I also plan to use this on the uh, Celestron 11-inch telescope and also on the smaller Orion ED80 telescope, which has even wider field of view. So I'm uh, looking forward to see how uh, well it looks with the other telescopes as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. And I, and I thank for all my friends who have been supporting my channel. And there's the list right there. And uh, I, I, I thank you very much. It helps keep this channel up and running. And also, if you like the video, please hit the like button. If you have any comments, yeah, please leave your comments as well. And I'm out here in the heavenly backyard garden and things are just shaping up right now. Uh, springtime in Savannah is just, it, it's like a paradise. Uh, driving through the streets of Savannah is like driving through a, a, a botanical garden with all the azaleas and camellias and the uh, dogwoods blooming, the wisteria, everything all, all going on at once right here in Savannah. I'm just so glad uh, that's where I have planted myself and uh, uh, right here in the backyard where I have a pretty good uh, bortal area here. My bortal uh, value is about 4.5. I can see the Milky Way on a dark night. Looking to my south and to my southeast is looking over the marsh and over toward the ocean. So there's not much light pollution coming out in that area. And uh, a few more trees came down, so I have a little bit more view of the southeastern sky. So I'm kind of happy about that. They weren't my trees, but and I didn't take them down, but when they, neighbors took them down. Uh, anyway, you know, thanks for watching. And uh, if you'd like to help support my channel, uh, you, you may join the channel if you would like, or if you would like to buy me a cup of coffee. I love my coffee. Uh, you can also do that uh, as well. The links to all that are below in the uh, comment section or in the description section. And of course, in the comment sections, I want you to leave your comments if you have any comments to leave. Anyway, I am looking forward to using this new camera, the Topek Sky Eye 24. So with that being said, uh, hope the, hopefully the sky is clearing off for everybody else besides me here in Savannah, Georgia. And with that being said, clear skies, everyone.